Have you ever wondered if the top countries in this world have a site where they could protect themselves from a nuclear strike? Well, sure they do. And not only can they protect themselves in this site, but they can fight back and launch missiles at the enemy. A missile silo, also known as a missile launch facility or a nuclear missile base, is a vertical cylindrical structure located underground and used for storage and launching intercontinental ballistic missiles, intermediate and medium range ballistic missiles. Inside these structures, there's typically a missile secured deep underground, protected by a large blast door on the top of the ground surface. The first such facility that was reported to exist was the La Capole, a silo in northern France built and operated by Germany in the Second World War. It served as a launch base for V-2 rockets and was designed with an immense concrete dome to store the many V-2 rockets, warheads, and fuel. At that time, about a dozen missiles were fueled, prepared, and rolled outside in a day. Decades later, in the 1960s, the Soviet Union introduced the UR-100 missile, and the U.S. introduced the Titan II missile series, which caused the missile silos to change. Both of these intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, used hypergolic propellant, which was stored inside the missile, allowing a rapid launch. Both of these missiles were moved into the underground facilities. Today, missile silos are scattered all across the world, with the majority located in the United States. Some of them can occupy an area of up to 12,000 square miles. They're protected by chain-link fence, barbed wire, and an array of motion detection devices. Armed guards routinely inspect each site and respond immediately to any attempt of unauthorized access. The 110-ton blast door on each silo is visible from the surface, which looks like a well-guarded concrete slab. Not much of the silo is visible from above, besides the blast door, but inside the depth of the silo, you can witness a lot of stuff that you'd never think is included in such a nuclear base. So what does the inside of a missile silo look like? Well, we'll show you a few different silos and what they include. The first one is in Abilene, Kansas, which was used to store and launch ballistic missiles in the 1960s. It's built on 11 acres of land and is home to the decommissioned Atlas F missile. The complex is designed to withstand a nuclear strike just like any other nuclear base, and it has a water and sewage system. The upper two levels consist of 1,200 square feet of space, and they were used for the launch control center and living quarters for the crew. The main missile silo is located at a depth of 170 feet, 52 meters. Currently, this particular silo caught the eye of many because it's up for sale. You heard that right, it's for sale for $380,000. And no, you won't be getting a missile with this silo. The second silo we'll mention is a Soviet one located near Pervomaysk, around 186 miles from Kyiv. This missile base has been turned into a museum. But before it got to that, under the 121-ton steel door, there was once a nuclear missile that was aimed at the United States and was ready to launch. The heart of the base lies deep underground. There's a command center that was left intact where Soviet officers spent years waiting for a command that would have signaled the end of civilization as we know it. There are also many generators designed to keep the base running for 45 days in the event of a nuclear war. Within the massive steel shell, the cylinder was suspended on shock absorbers to insulate the men and the equipment inside from the power of a nuclear strike. Commanders would spend six hours reminding you to smash that like button if you haven't done so already. But no, they would spend six hours in front of their keyboards, strapped into their seats, and they weren't permitted to eat or drink while in this seat. If a nuclear war happened, the base would receive a direct command from Moscow, after which the launch code would be determined. As soon as the code was entered, the crew would then press the launch button and the missile would be launched. With the development of the SM-65 Atlas, which was the first ICBM developed by the United States, a series of missile bases were constructed in the late 1950s and put into service by the U.S. Air Force and the Strategic Air Command during the Cold War. Because of the emergency of space and missile technology during the 1950s, the Atlas project became the number one priority in the country as it gained national priority status. It quickly became the most important project in the United States. There were six different versions of the Atlas missile designated the Atlas A, B, C, D, E, and F. The first three Atlas missiles were prototypes and were never deployed as production ICBMs. The D, E, and F types were all operational missiles, and there were eight Atlas D, 27 Atlas E, and 72 Atlas F missile bases built. They were controlled by 10 different Air Force bases located across the United States. 
There were four different versions of missile silos built for Atlas missiles. The first one was vertical and had above-ground launchers. They were located at Vanderburg, Wyoming, and were unique in their construction. The second version included missiles that were stored horizontally in a structure with a retractable roof, which would be raised to the vertical and launched. The third version of silos also included the missiles stored horizontally, but they were better protected than the second version. In a concrete building, which like the previous version, would then be raised vertically and launched. The fourth and final version of these bases included vertical storage of the missiles in underground silos, which were mainly used for the Atlas F ICBM. The missiles were fueled in the silo, and then they would have to be raised to the surface to be launched. However, the service life of the Atlas missile was short-lived, as they had a service life of between three and five years. The nature of the liquid-fueled rockets made the Atlas a very complex missile to manage and maintain. There were several accidents caused by the missile throughout its life, which caused the complete loss and closure of the sites involved. The advancements in solid fuel rocket technology made the Atlas obsolete, and by 1965, all the Atlas missile sites were closed and decommissioned. Today, there are around 54 Titan missile silos around the world. One of them is the Titan Missile Museum, formerly known as the Air Force Facility Missile Site 8. It's a former ICBM site located around 25 miles from Tucson, Arizona. This particular site was constructed in 1963 and was deactivated in 1984. It was a site that included the Titan II missile, and it's the only one that survived the Cold War period. Inside the silo, there's a three-level launch control center containing the missile and its related equipment. It was built of steel reinforced concrete and a number of three-ton blast doors that sealed the various areas from the surface and each other. The missile was located near its command and control operations personnel. You'd have to go through tunnels connecting the launch control center and launch facility to access the missile. The silo saw its end in 1984 as part of President Reagan's policy of smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, decommissioning the Titan II missiles was part of a weapons system modernization program. All of the operational Titan II silos around the country were demolished, with the exception of only this one that was saved and restored into a museum. At the time of the operation of the silo, the Titan II was the largest operational land-based nuclear missile ever used by the United States, which made it so powerful. Many countries wanted to get their hands on such missiles, but only the U.S. had them. In 1961, the U.S. Air Force began constructing 1,000 Minuteman missile sites, but unlike earlier above-ground facilities, all of the 1,000 silos were designed underground and were made to survive anything but a direct hit. Into each silo, a 62-foot reinforced steel liner was inserted that was covered by poured concrete forming the external silo wall. The LGM-30 Minuteman missile was then inserted into the silo and covered by a heavy steel and concrete door. For almost 30 years, the Minuteman missile served as an integral component of the U.S. nuclear trait of land-based ICBMs. Although it was never launched against an enemy target, this weapon system's ability to unleash destructive power shouldn't go unnoted. The silos containing these missiles housed crew quarters and support equipment. Each silo controls the flight of 10 Minuteman ICBMs and is manned 24 hours a day by a two-person Air Force crew. It's 59 feet long and 29 feet in diameter, with an outer wall of 4 feet thick to ensure security and protection. Inside the capsule is a box housing the equipment used by the crew to monitor and launch the missiles. In 1991, to reduce the number of ICBMs worldwide, the Air Force began to deactivate the entire Minuteman force. There were 150 Minuteman missile silos and 15 launch control facilities. After the deactivation began, some of these silos were preserved, such as the Ellsworth Air Force Base sites, which are among the nation's oldest Minuteman missile bases. Today, the preserved silos are a historic site. Bye for now.